right, talking up Texas football here at the Voice of College Football. We got Matthew Miller on the line. We always enjoy the conversation and getting the insight from Matthew, uh, who has uh, hosted our post game show here for the Horns. With uh, as I look at the NFL draft board, a ton of guys that are projected to be um, in on the NFL draft coming up this year. So as we look at the secondary, I guess we start at corner. What's your outlook there? I love the cornerbacks. Um, we got Gavin Holmes from Wake Forest. He's a good player. Played three years at Wake Forest. He'll probably be our third corner. We have, um, obviously, uh, Terrence Brooks, who we talked about coming in last year. Only 17, year old, 17 years old when he came in. And he played very well. Like, I was shocked by how well he played. He's going to be 18 this year, and he's going to be starting alongside Ryan Watts, who came over from Ohio State and played very well. Could have gone to the NFL draft. Probably would have been a mid-round pick. Again, coming back to um, – push up his draft stock. And that's another thing what I like is what you see about the culture getting better at Texas, in my opinion, under Steve Sarkeesian. A lot of guys in the past, if you look at Tom Herman, as soon as they got like a third or fourth round grade, they were gone. They didn't come back because they were like, why would I come back? They obviously didn't enjoy playing under Tom Herman. They enjoy playing under Steve Sarkeesian. I think NIL obviously helps there as well. Um, but I I really like Ryan Watts and I really like um, Terrence Brooks. Obviously, I haven't seen much of Gavin Holmes. It's going to be interesting to see him play alongside those guys. And then Jade Barron at the spur position played very well last season. I think he was our second best defensive player. So I really like that group at cornerback. Talking safety, Matthew. And uh, of course, Jalen Catalan uh, was a playmaker at Arkansas uh, for the past few seasons. So he's a big addition. Yeah, hundred percent. His only issue is health. So if he's on the field, he's a very good player. Um, obviously the number one thing for coaches is availability and he isn't, doesn't make himself available enough. I think if he was healthy, he would be in the NFL right now. I don't think there's any chance he'd be at Texas. I think he'd be a first or second round pick. That's how talented he is. Uh, he flew off the screen to me when we played them. Like he was by far their best defensive player, him and Drew Sanders. Um, so I think it's going to be interesting to, uh, to see him play at Texas. If he stays healthy, Alongside Bug Thompson, Jaron Thompson, I think this is a pretty good safety duo. Again, the backups worry me. I like Michael Tapp, but he's a walk-on. B.J. Allen, a high four-star recruit coming in last year, hasn't popped off yet. I mean, he's sitting behind Michael Tapp. Another, again, a good player, but he's a walk-on for a reason. So, again, the depth here scares me. But if those two guys can stay relatively healthy, I really like the safety duo. All right. Anything else on the defense before I ask you basically to forecast uh, improvement or decline in the defense and how good this unit should be if they – reach realistic expectations well Malik Muhammad that's another name to take a uh, look uh, keep an eye on because if you look I didn't think Taron Brooks was going to play last year at 17 he came in contributed played well Malik Muhammad is the highest rated cornerback recruit we've had in a decade so I do think he gets playing time and if he plays well that even adds to that group and if you have a lockdown secondary with an average front that's you can get by in the big 12 now will you be able to compete nationally probably not because you need pass rushing but I, I look for Malik Muhammad as another freshman to keep your eye on this year for Texas. 